No, your eyes are not deceiving you. Yes, you are that old. Mega Man 9 turns 15 years old today. On September 22nd, 2008, Mega Man 9 was released for the Nintendo Wii, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. It is a fan favorite, even ranking as the highest rated Mega Man game on Metacritic. Let's see if this game has stood the test of time over the years. We will be covering everything from reveal to release and onward. But first, it would really help if you subscribed. Let's begin. In June of 2008, various rumors were floating around various forums that spoke of a Mega Man 9. These leaks certainly looked promising. Let's take a look at one of them. Here we have a picture of what appears to be gameplay footage. This picture quality is complete ass though, even for 2008. However, from the looks of it, Mega Man kind of looks the way he does in Mega Man 11. He's also using a charge shot, which is something he does not have in the official game. The self-proclaimed beta tester also included some information on the game. They stated that you can play as Proto Man, which is true. The graphics are in an 8-bit style, but said that they don't resemble the NES. This one confused me. Why wouldn't they make the game look like the NES but still stick with an 8-bit look? The first six games were on the NES, so why wouldn't they just go all out with the NES look? They also stated that the game is not connected with the X series. Then they wrote that the game won't be in widescreen, but it will by the time it's done. This is obviously false, the game was never in widescreen, but it does support 480p like the leaker said. They also mentioned the appearance of Tango, saying that he functions the same way he did on the Game Boy. Again false, he didn't appear until Mega Man 10. This leak ended up just being a troll, unfortunately. The reveal of the game sparked lots of excitement. There hasn't been an entry in the classic series in over 10 years, and the other games in the franchise that came out in the past few years weren't all too great. This game would also be designed by Inti Creates, who also worked on the Mega Man Zero series, could you tell? Many people had a good feeling about this game, but others were still skeptical. Let's take a look at some of the concept art for Mega Man 9. Concrete Man stayed relatively the same in terms of size. He was originally called Cement Man, and sported green and red instead of orange and gray. Tornado Man used to look entirely different. He used to be less humanoid and resembled more of a weather vane. He was called Weather Man, and looked a lot like Spark Man, having orange and blue colors instead of green and yellow. Other concept art of Tornado Man depicted him having large fans on his shoulders and more yellow colors. Splash Woman probably had the most changes, the most noticeable being the lack of estrogen. That's right, Splash Woman was originally planned to be a guy. He resembled more of a real-life fish, kept relatively the same color scheme as Splash Woman, and was named Ocean Man. Plug Man stayed about the same aside from one piece of concept art. He had the same color scheme, had a large electric ball at his torso, and was named Plasma Man. Plasma Man was also a frequently scrapped Robot Master idea from the early games. Maybe someday we'll get a Plasma Man in a future Mega Man game. Jewel Man, of course being number 69, really only changed colors in his concept art. It was usually some shade of blue. The size of the jewels on his body also varied, and he was originally supposed to be named Diamond Man. Also, the concept art calls him a fag, which is pretty funny, just because it's in official art. Hornet Man also went through a lot of changes, one of which being that he was originally planned to be a girl, appeared more like a bee rather than a hive, and would have been called Honey Woman. Honestly, I would have taken Honey Woman over Splash Woman. Other concept art depicted Hornet Man as more of a wasp, being more slender and aggressive looking. There were also other concept designs that showed him as a lot more of a hive than the current design. Magma Man probably had the least amount of changes out of the eight robot masters. He had relatively the same figure and color scheme throughout all of them, except for this one, which I like better than the original. Galaxy Man changed quite a bit. He used to look more humanoid and had rings around his body rather than looking like a UFO. At one point he was yellow, looked more like the Galaxy Man today, and had detachable floating arms. He would have been called Space Man. Fake Man went through many changes. Most of them were regional changes. For example, he looked like a sheriff, a European police officer, and a mall cop-esque design, before they eventually settled on a more western look. The Twin Devil also was planned to have more eyes surrounding it, and were supposed to be purple and pink, rather than green and orange. Mega Man 9 was released for the Nintendo Wii on September 22, 2008. 
It was released for the PlayStation 3 on September 25th, 2008, and the Xbox 360 on October 1st, 2008, along with a Japan-only mobile device release on December 1st, 2010. It was re-released for all major platforms, including Steam in 2017 with the Legacy Collection. It was a digital-only title, the first mainline title to do so, which did make a few angry. I find it reasonable as this game takes around an hour and a half to complete the main story, so a digital release made a lot more sense. It ended up being a fan favorite of many. It was also said to have the best level design in the series, which I don't think anyone believes, right? Maybe that's just my opinion. While not my favorite, I still really enjoyed it. It has one of the best soundtracks in the series, and some of the best looking characters and stories that I've seen in the series. There are also lots of fun little details hidden throughout the games, such as how Dr. Wily's Swiss bank number reads 19871217, the release date for Mega Man 1 on the NES, or how the box art for the game resembles the box art for the original Mega Man NES titles. It is also the first game in the franchise to have achievements that count towards an online user profile. This was only in the Xbox 360 version, though. However, I think this game was trying too hard to be like Mega Man 2. Even some of the music stayed the same from that title. You couldn't slide or use the charge shot, and the music sounds very reminiscent of that game. But overall, I liked it a lot. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Compared to what we have now, I believe that this game holds up very well. Not better than most, but it definitely compares nicely. Mega Man 9 was the first in the franchise to have downloadable content. I think they did good for a first time making DLC. For 200 Wii points, 160 Microsoft points, or around 2 US dollars, you can unlock Proto Man as a playable character. He can use a charge shot, slide, and his shield. He's also made of glass. For around $3, you can unlock an endless mode, where you can try to clear as many screens as you can without dying once. For $1, you can unlock Fake Man's stage, and for $1 each, you can unlock Hero Mode and Superhero Mode. These are hard and very hard versions of the game. In the Legacy Collection, these are all unlocked by beating the main story, or inputting a secret code. Mega Man 9 was an overall fan favorite that holds a special place in the hearts of many fans. It introduced new fans to the series, and got many people who grew up with the original games to play them again. The use of an 8-bit retro design emphasized the nostalgia factor, as the series turned 20 years old that past December. It transported players back to the golden era of gaming and evoked fond memories of their early adventures with the Blue Bomber. Thank you for watching this far. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. By doing so, you are giving me the motivation to make more of these in the future. Until next time. I also want to make a statement regarding my Mega Man X Dive video. I just wanted to clarify why I made it. I do not dislike Mega Man X Dive offline. I actually like it better than the original. I feel that the pacing is much better, and progression is much smoother and easier than in the original game. My issue with it was its price. I do not feel that $30 is a reasonable price, but I already discussed that in the video. Thank you for all of the comments you left on it, including the criticism.